grab it here. Thought we'd um, go over the process of backing up the boot media. And, um, basically covered in three ways, so I'm going to um, show what um, this media I'm using to back up to. And, um, and actually look at how you duplicate the disk on the analyzer and then a few words about um, creating a boot disk from an image. So let's get into it. So anyway, I um, was able to acquire these types of disks. So that's the front side. So, um, of course, there are lots of um, 1.44 meg, 3.5 inch disks uh, in terms of manufacturers. So I don't know if it's critical that it's verbatim made to him, but um, that's, um, the reason I'm using these is that The majority of the di boot, di or the all the boot discs, and I got four, four of them that came with the unit, um, and they're copies of the original. And they're ri I didn't get the original, so they're also um, the same type. And then these are the, the new ones, and. Um, yeah, for those that haven't worked with these for years, and it's the same applies to me, I haven't worked with these for years. <laughs> then um, I have a few details to look at. So you have, um, you have the right protection, um, enable, disable. So this is a physical thing to prevent um, writing to the disk on this side. And then on this side it's indicative of the, um, the kind of capacity type that it has. Uh, and this is the hole that indicates that it's a high capacity disk. Uh, it's, um, I've read some documentation about this uh, and it's how densely it writes the data on the disk and um, uh, yeah, the documentation isn't that um, clear. And um, in some cases, there's even operating systems that ignore the existence of that hole. So, so anyway, but this is what it looks like. So here's the, yeah, not not the original discs that that HP used, but the the discs that came with the device. So you can see the difference. So this is uh, basically, if I understand, this is indicated. This is a low capacity disc, and this is a high capacity. So anyway, continuing the story around down. Um, double density versus high density. I'm going to actually put a link to a good article on the internet about the different disks. But um, I am assuming that these are the more closer to the original um, that were copied from the original disk um, in an older times. And this is this is double density format. And you can see that with this there is no hole here, there is no hole here. And then they created more disks and they're using the high density disk and as you see the hole is open there so they just basically, I think they used the analyzer to copy from here to here and from, yeah, and, and made another extra. Now, according to what I've read that if you do use um, high density disks in a double density system, which is basically the logic analyzer, like we're going to do now. So we're going to put use this high density disk in in the drive. Then you, it'll, it may or may not work. And then the long, you know how reliable over the long term the um, the disk will be is is a bit questionable. Plus the thing is that if you actually end up having situations where you write to this disk, then you might end up in, yeah even more problems but you know since this is a hobby system and and I've actually already yeah I'm going to show you how to, how I did it but um, I already made one of these and it seems to work it boots multiple times I'm actually going to test if I <coughs> enable write protection 
on this uh, on the disk. But, but, um, I'm not sure the analyzer ever writes to the disk if you don't specifically want it to do something with the disk. So I'm going to try and, and boot the OS with the right protection enabled. It so far it doesn't seem to mean anything, but it will protect the disk from being written to. So if you have an HD disk, then you prevent the double disk disk drive from trying to write to it and possibly running so it might give it more long longevity. But as I said, this one, these are the four original, uh, the four disks I got with the unit, and this one is actually, you can get the file system, um, but it um, it can't find the, when you try and boot it, it can't find the OS file. So that's, that's this problem. But as you see, it does have some mechanical damage and so I'm not, I'm not completely sure if this is a disk format issue or long term reliability. I think this one's been this one's been beaten up quite bad. But anyway, so we're gonna go for that. This is an empty HD disk and we're going to duplicate that one. So now we loaded the <coughs> operating system from one of the known good disks. Operations. Duplicate disk. And then we say execute. And then it says yeah, it needs to use the whole machine and it's going to reboot. Because it needs to use all the memory in the machine to do the copy. So, and we say continue. formats at first mm -hmm. and it will write whatever data it has in RAM. So what's the source disk again? Isn't there enough memory? So now I suggest since we're actually um, copying the system disk that we just let it move from this one. So I'll just take stack and see if it loads. Oh. Seems to 
Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the right protection on this one, because it doesn't seem to actually matter that one has that enabled, at least it doesn't complain about anything. So on these HD discs, I'm going to enable right protection just to prevent this double density drive from trying to write data to this. So create a system disk from an image file and create an image file from a system disk. That's actually what one would like to do. So I just laid out some stuff here to illustrate. So basically what it needs to happen is you need to pull the image file from somewhere and then it's up on the, on the computer and the computer will put it in its own storage. And then the computer needs to take that image and it needs to pass it to um, the disk drive in such a format that the stripes and sectors on the magnetic surface of the disk end up correctly. And then, of course, the reverse is true. You actually want to make an image from a disk, so you have the disk, you put it into the drive, then it has to go to the drive, it goes into the computer, and then it has to be put on the um, uh, computer storage in the correct order, and then it needs to end up going over the wire in the correct format. So, anyway, according to all the studies I've made, this is um, the format used for this disk is something called HP LIF, which is um, logical interchange format. And, um, it's Hewlett Packard standard mass storage format. It can be used to interchange files among various HP computer systems. A LIF volume contains a header identifying this LIF volume and a directory that defines the contents files of the volume. So um, not not st standard FAT format or anything else. It's a completely custom. Um, layout and bit pattern that it puts on the disk. So um, a little bit about images on the on the uh, in the cloud. Um, there's quite a lot of image and utility resources uh, referencing um, agilent.com, FTP agilent.com or other Agilent um, locations and uh, uh, most of the referenced resources seem to have been moved to an unloaded location so they don't exist anymore or they mean yeah optionally the, the H, uh, Agilent has decided to delete them so I haven't been successful with finding any of, any of them. Um, however I did uh, kind of dig up that the Latage image version often mentioned is uh, 1.11 and it's for both 1650A and 1651A. So that was <laughs> the main information I got of that, uh, that investigation. Uh, a lot of the images I found online tend to be images from existing disks, so, so there's quite a lot of success that people have thought that they've been able to create an image for. Um, but um, the problem is that often no comment is given on how and if they were able to use the image to create a new disk and if the disk actually worked so that was a bit sad so, so um, uh, there really is no or at least i couldn't find evidence of end-to-end -end success stories i mean it's quite easy to to actually take any uh, an image of this going through some of the tooling that's available just generally but I mean you, you don't know if it's a valid binary image and you know you don't know if it works before you actually put it on a new disk and then test it in the, in the target analyzer so anyway so what am I, what am I trying to use when it comes to image um, handling um, what I have available is that on, on, on Windows I have a standard uh, 2020th PC 
uh, Windows 11 Pro 64-bit and running on AMD and um, as you will see later in, in my description here uh, an important point that no floppy controller or floppy drive and then on the Linux side I have um, Raspberry Pi 4 uh, Raspbian OS 32-bit um, version 10 Buster on ARM and then I have a standard 2010-ish PC which is running Ubuntu 64-bit 22.04.2 uh, LTS on Intel and again an interesting point on uh, no floppy controller or floppy disk drive and you will notice why this is important when we move, move forward so before we get into the um, utilities and things that I found and um, I actually have compiled a, a, a specification for uh, what kind of equipment would you perceivably need to be successful in, in this um, image taking operation and um, I would say the most compatible Microsoft operating system is MS-DOS, Windows 95, 98, ME and as a secondary choice uh, as a platform for the Microsoft uh, DOS hardware emulation and some of the utilities you could have NT, 2000, XP, Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, 32-bit and I wouldn't recommend 64-bit um, OS in general and stay away from Windows 11 64-bit based on my experience and then the system should definitely have a 1.44 megabit three and a half inch HD DD capable floppy controller and a floppy disk drive so if you move over to the Linux side um, then um, here is a bit of an interesting quirk that uh, you need the older some older generation of Linux that still supports direct floppy hardware setup and access. So basically you could um, use the release date matching with the Microsoft OS um, that is related to the tool and basically pick that generation of the Linux distribution. And again not recommended 64-bit in, in general to avoid that and then the same that it should have a uh, physical um, 1.44 megabit 3.5 inch HD DD capable floppy controller and uh, floppy disk drive. <laughs> so I thought we'd um, just pop through a few sites that may be of interest. Um, I put all the links in the, in the comments so I can go and dig them up after the presentation. Uh, the first one that I hit was Keysight and LiftUtil. It's basically this set of utilities gives you the possibility to read, write and format lift disks on a PC floppy disk drive. And um, basically for MS-DOS computers. So, but it can't do disk imaging. Anyway, here's a bit about um, lift utilities and um, this has the some dumping and image creation capabilities plus a lot of other things so, um, and you can actually download this quite easily to your Linux distribution. Uh, the main reason I include this link is that it's actually uh, yeah it's a man page exp uh, export so you can actually easily get information about the different commands by looking at this page. And this was potentially the most promising um, site that I found and um, this basically provides you um, uh, utilities to handle lift files and media images and it, uh, supports both MS-DOS, probably XP or higher and um, a Linux computer if it's running Debian or a distribution that handles Debian packages and um, I think that this is pretty much yeah, one of the most promising op options 32 and 64 bit. Um, yeah, but again, a um, floppy disk controller and floppy disk, physical floppy disk is needed. 
So, here is a very interesting page that I found. This is actually um, an HP museum. So it covers a lot of HP specifics and HP equipment, but is generally useful also. And it has a uh, it has tools uh, for lift file system handling, uh, and they're you expanded to the extent that the the um, if somebody remembers this GPI B um, bus, which was very common back in the day, uh, this this stuff here, where you can chain devices, they actually have lots. They have all, all the drivers and stuff, so you can actually run this lift stuff over the whole HP uh, infrastructure for those that are into HP. And otherwise, the this the tools are also usable just on a floppy disk basis, and then it also has a a, g a nice background for the lift file systems. So I'll include this. So, DOSBox, not a direct tool to handle lift um, files or disk images, but this could work as a as a basis uh, for running um, yeah, tools, and I will be covering one of those after this one. So the, this, this can run on um, Linux or um, or on um, Windows. Uh, yeah, so DOS emulation. And it is of course dependent on the underlying hardware, so if you if you don't have a floppy disk controller and a floppy disk drive, then you're out of luck. <laughs> USB um, floppy disk drives will still not work. But I just thought I'd include it because it's um, it's the it's the way to emulate DOS. So um, Dunfield DOS widgets. Um, Dunfield has done a lot of great work over the years, creating lots of different types of tools. Um, this is for MS DOS, so that's why I put the DOS box there. It would be one gateway to be able to run these utilities. And then, as you see, there's quite a lot of different utilities is created over the years and um, one of the utilities that um, many yeah, have per been using um, yeah, or, or they have referenced is this um, image man disk so floppy disk at the image and there are actually there are I'm not going I have a link I'll also put into the comments that we actually have um, the image file. So this is the um, operating system image file, and then you have some demo and some where I don't work. And here's a Z80 disassembler, and then the these are actually five and a quarter inch disk um, images, but they're in uh, standard DD format. Um, yeah, so those you could use to practice. And, um, yeah, if one had the correct hardware, it will probably work very well. So, those familiar with DD on Linux, which is, um, yeah, actually it's a bit convert and copy file is maybe a bit of an understatement. I mean, it can copy, you can copy whole um, hard drive devices and stuff. <laughs> But anyway, th those I, I threw it in here that those familiar with DD are happy to know that you can actually get um, pretty much all the functionality on, on Windows. And I think this runs from uh, Windows NT up. So I, I haven't looked into the, the details, but it's um, yeah, because uh, yeah, here it said something about not not really working under Windows 9x. So. So I am assuming that it's from NT and four. So floppy disk converter. And the main reason I put this in here is that actually, even if I, we're not going to convert image you know, one image type to another, it still had a very interesting README section. So I think that that is um, something that um, <laughs> it might be because it it it, li it lists. I'm not saying all known, but it, it, it tries to make a comprehensive list, for example, of raw disk layouts. So the 69 different types of uh, raw disk layouts. And then, uh, 
it's just format plugins for different types and file types supported and uh, this is very comprehensive interface molds and stuff so yeah so also useful as general information okay so here here is a very interesting solution it's a custom solution to um to have a usb interface to a um standard floppy disk drive and um, it comes with software and it's uh, reputably can copy pretty much any kind of a disk yeah it's got I haven't looked into detail but it's it's more like those that are really hardcore into this that you know the stuff has to work and one wants to run it from one's existing personal computer the one doesn't want to downgrade or get into it yeah, get into retro computing equipment and stuff soon. But I mean, it's it's a bit pricey for for what I would like to <laughs> pay. But but I thought I'd throw it in here because the if one had to do a, lo a lot of this or one was dependent on very many different formats and not only interested in lift, uh, uh, then then this actually might be a solution that um, could could actually be worth looking into. If I understand it, this this runs on. Um, normal computing hardware so with the software included so you yeah you don't need to have any uh, it supports many different types of floppies also on Windows 7 through Windows 11 yeah 32 bit and 64 bit so you you actually if you if you buy this then you you can basically you can use your <laughs> Windows 11 installation. 64. So, working with disks, an intro to floppy disks and floppy drives, and, and this is, a, I also included that more for informational purposes, so, so if one wants to actually dive deep into, um, yeah, what is a three and a half inch disk, and, you know, all, all the details related to it, and, you know, high density, double density, density differences, can one mix the disks, what happens if one does yeah. so uh, it's a re recommended read so just a manual page for the floppy disk device sadly it's one of those which is embedded in one of these advertising pages but, um, what's interested in here is the um, format definitions, the device files and you won't find the lift um, uh, parameters here, sadly. So, all kinds of different um, capacities, cylinder sector and head, some base minor stuff. And then there's the um, IO call function uh, functions that one can use. And um, some of these have been depreciated. So I just showed you the um, FD device and the semi-hard-coded um, format descriptions, uh, which are auto-detectable. So it means like if, if you insert such a floppy, then it will auto-detect you know, what format it is. You know, what kind of yeah, <laughs> what de device um, description it is. And then when I was talking about depreciated functionality in um, in the Linux world, the, and it's probably done in Windows along also. You know, they follow the same. So if you look at the um, the um, lift utils, and then I just took an example here of one of the um, source code files. And here's uh, lift recalibrate ph dev ice, which it actually executes when you're trying to do some of the operations and, and basically the to simply what it is trying to do is it's trying to set up uh, the um, custom format dynamically that's needed for the lift um, for this for this disk this specific disk you know, what's the size what's the sector number of heads of course now that's too much you know, tracks and stretch so it, it, it needs to be able to set these up and um, 
basically already fails up here because the this here the clearing these parameters um, and um, ultimately setting them is um, it's a depreciated function so it'll, it already fails when it comes to here it says whoops it's no longer supported and um, you can see that in the uh, kernel source code for the FT device that you can track it down and what kernel major kernel version still has this um, ability for a totally custom um, FT configuration and what um, kernel versions don't so um, yeah so you have to um, basically to run the stuff you would need to have a floppy disk controller and a floppy disk drive and then you would need to have a Linux version where um, this custom um, parameter setup isn't blocked yeah if you're running against um, conventional uh, PC hardware that is if you don't buy the custom adapter or USB adapter so the question remains was I able to um, create an image from the disk and was I able to put an image on a disk that worked and um, sadly I must report no and uh, the main main reason um, is that this uh, this is number reason number one the, the it, it's even documented in if you read around all those comments and stuff then then basically they say that uh, USB um, um, floppy disk drives <laughs> are not the thing to use and, and will, n will not work and will never work so um, the, the, all the information that I have um, uh, it starts um, with the fact that you need to have a floppy disk controller and a floppy disk drive physical force of floppy disk drive I do know that you have um, flash drive based emulators for floppy disk, but that's basically the same thing you're talking the, the operating system doesn't really care if it's a, if it's a floppy disk drive or, or USB emulator emulation of that. Um, and um, yeah, and then I crashed into this problem with um, Linux and quite probably Windows not accepting custom parameters for um, for the disk format. But I can't. I mean, ultimately, I can't test because I don't actually have. Or currently, I don't have a machine that has a floppy disk controller and a, and a floppy disk drive. Uh, and the solution to buy the um, or would be to buy the um, specialist device that I showed you which you connect with USB and that in itself is a highly customized USB uh, controller for a floppy disk drive that it has much more advanced emulation c capabilities and, and yeah custom software on your PC to be able to handle the copying or reading and writing in the formats required but as I said more yeah 150 euros ah. I can yeah I want to buy a retro computer for that price <laughs> so, so yeah but anyway yeah, I hope I well, yeah the disappointment was that I wasn't able to but of course I, I am ca like we saw I am capable of creating um, images uh, either on um, seemingly either either on um, HD floppies or uh, I'm actually going to buy a set of DD um, double density <coughs> disks and, and, and create a few more of these. So, so I think I'm safe from that perspective. I don't, I don't really have a super urgent need to um, to create. But I just thought maybe somebody out there that really needs to like go go one of these logic analyzers and actually hasn't got a boot drive boot disk, then they would really need to get some hints how to get started but I, I think I I'm, I'm relatively confident that if I'm bought a relatively cheap retro computer running XP uh, and which would then of course you could boot it with a USB stick to 
a variant of an older variant of a Linux distribution. You could probably get the majority of the utilities that I've shown here working, or or the DOS box or some variant of. So if you yeah if you buy yeah the retro obviously the retro computer itself would have a floppy disk controller um, on the motherboard or as a separate card and then um, a floppy disk drive. So yeah, there's been a bit of comments that doesn't need to be a, there are some floppy disk drives that are basically HD only but uh, I think that if one buys from that period I would think that they would be pretty much guaranteed to be, guaranteed to be I think very seldom you'd find one with only double density, then it would have to be really old. Uh, but I would think that there would be double density HD floppy disk drives. And anyway, if the only thing you need to then up, if you get the retro computer and then you find out that it doesn't work, the, if the only thing you need to do is to buy um, a DD, um, for example, a dedicated DD format um, floppy disk drive, that's not super expensive. Okay, but this was quite an adventure. Um, yeah, I was a bit disappointed that it wasn't as easy as to plug in the USB floppy disk drive and then run some software. But, um, yeah, I mean, the I think the key key problem is that it's uh, is this this requires a custom layout on the magnetic um, disk in here. So it, it's it's. Not any, any, it's not any of the um, supported standard um, formats. It's a completely custom. And it looks like that. Yeah, move, moving forward, they want to get rid of those custom supported molds and stuff. <laughs> Great, less of a mess. Okay, but I hope this was useful, and um, we'll continue hacking, and I'll see you in the next one.